Hey everybody, W here with another Stratega game analysis. This is going to be game number seven of our Play From Behind series. Attacking with the Majors. I think these uh, games are really helpful for beginners because the hardest part to learn about this game is how to play from behind. And in this game, we'll learn that you don't always have to win the game by... Uh, uh, getting more pieces than your opponent. You don't have to do that. There's other ways of winning. So let's get started and see how we do. Uh, this player was a fairly good... Uh, I think he was... There we go. Oh, he was... Let's go back. Uh, 365, whatever that is. And he has a lot of experience. A little bit under 500. So let's get going. I didn't speed this game up. This is normal, normal pace. It wasn't a long game. It was kind of a, the type of game that I like. If the games go longer than 20 minutes, I tend to lose focus. And my win-loss percentage gets, gets worse. So that's the one advantage when you attack early with these majors. You're going to get information early, which might take you a long time to get. So, the games are shorter, so that's nice. So, that turns out pretty good. Uh, he, had a, he had a major here, so we swap major. So, I'm only going to be down, at worst, two majors at the start. And that was a good use of a scout. So, I always have to worry about symmetrical setups when you're playing, when you're playing uh, players under 500, usually... They, a lot of times they have symmetrical setup, so this could be a bomb as well. I'm hoping he doesn't have both sides closed off. Because you just hate finding bombs with your majors. You really want to find the marshal in general if you're going to lose your majors. He's taking his time. He's taking a long time here. So another good use of a scout. So we found two bombs on the wings. See, that makes the game easier when you find bombs early on the front row. Uh, that's why I think most top players don't have bombs on their front rows, especially in the, the six open spots. It's just, it's, you usually don't get much. You know, you might, you might get a... Uh... So now I'm just trying to see if these pieces move because I'm worried that he might have both sides bombed off and he's he's gone through four skin so we get a lieutenant so that's good so now we're probably gonna find a colonel or general marshal and we find a so that's kind of interesting he didn't attack with this piece so this piece is probably lower than a major because you really don't want to reveal the general if you don't have to. So we can assume that this is not a colonel. It could be a marshal. Maybe he has an overload and he doesn't want to reveal his marshal. But this is not a colonel. Because if you had your choice, you'd reveal your colonel and not your general. You always want to give your opponent the least amount of information. So you always want to give them the lowest piece instead of a higher piece here. So that's good. We found a, a general wish it was the marshal, but I right, so now I have to attack. I'm forced to attack here with the way I'm playing in, in this series with my major. We get a sergeant. 
and we get a marshal. So that's pretty good. Even though I didn't get uh, too many lower pieces, I'm only up a lieutenant and a sergeant and a scout. So I am up three already, three lower pieces. But I'm down two majors. But we know the general and the marshal. And then usually 70, around 70% of the time, the flag is on the marshal side where the marshal started. So I'm going to try to concentrate over here to see if we can find the flag. And then, you know, you might think the spy might be here. If the general was here, the spy might be. It's probably not here. Could be here, might be here. So you always have to think where the spy might be when you find the... Uh... So now I'm moving out pieces. That's what we want to do. We want to try to milk his lower pieces now. He wants to protect his lead. He's going to be bringing down junk pieces. That's what they do. And you try to intercept them with your uh, colonel and captains. I'm bringing up this miner. I'm hoping to find s some more scouts. And that might have been a waste of a miner. Uh, maybe I, I should have. But this could have been a bomb. So you never know. Or it could have been a scout. But uh, that might have been a bad play. Maybe I should have gone this way to see what this piece is. Because this could have been the spy. Or this could have been a bomb maybe. But that's rare to find maybe three bombs on the front row. So... But anyway, we found a lieutenant. I was hoping to find at least a colonel, a bomb or a colonel or a scout. So, but at least we cleared some. The, the one thing early on, you don't mind swapping some pieces early on because you want to, or, or even losing some of your lower pieces just so you get some mobility because I need to be able to move my captains and colonels from side to side. And I need, I need escape lanes for my colonels. And I want to have escape lanes for my marshal and general so they don't get revealed. So it's always good early on to, to, to open up a lane so you can move back and forth. Okay, so we swamp captain. So that's not so bad. He knew that was a captain. So basically I got two for one for that because he scouted that captain. So this gets really frustrating for, for my opponent because his high pieces are known and mine are not known. So he really has to play defense a lot of the game. And any piece that comes up can be my high piece. And... and you know, he doesn't really want to call the bluff because he wants to maintain his lead. So he's that's why they 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 make that mistake of using all their lower pieces early on to try to find your high pieces. But what they should be doing is he should be using his one of his majors to attack pieces coming up. And and then he might intercept maybe a captain of mine or take a sergeant or a captain and not lose a lot of his lower pieces. That's a mistake players uh, make. They really should use, if they're up two or three majors, they should use one of their majors to attack pieces that are coming up and then maybe even keep on attacking to try to find my marshal in general because information is, is, is uh, very important in this game. And a lot of times it's more important than uh, material pieces. Okay, so we have a captain there. Then that's good, that's his uh, seventh scout we got. So he only has one more scout. And it'd be nice to get his last scout because then I could move my spy freely and I could move my high pieces into his territory 
and they won't get revealed unless I want them to be revealed. So I have to move over just to protect. I don't want a scout coming down here and getting my, uh, revealing the marshal. The key to coming back from behind is keeping your high pieces hidden until they can make a big impact on the game. If my marshal got revealed, it would be very hard to come back if you're down two or three majors. So that's good. We get a lieutenant. So now we have a two lieutenant lead, which is nice. We're up two lieutenants and uh, three scouts. So we are getting some lower pieces. So he probably wants to swap. Now you should have figured this was a uh, sergeant coming from behind a bomb. So he probably has a sergeant over here as well. But every piece matters, so that's important. So this probably is a colonel. You know, the general's over here. He's swapping. That's fine. I don't mind swapping because, like I said, it gives my uh, captains and colonels escape lanes and increases my mobility. I have to move up there to protect if that was a scout. So he really wants to know what this piece is. I'm moving, I move this scout over here and just in case I need to move this over and get my general to the spy. So now this is one thing I like to do a lot. Uh, when they don't know your high pieces and you, you know their high pieces, this strategy works a lot. I tend to bring up a miner in the middle of the game and try to target these pieces on the second row, hopefully open up, you know, a, a bombed in flag, try to find a bomb. And again, the most popular spots for flags are four over from the left and four over from the right. So then you'd want to target this or this to break open, you know, a triangle of bombs. And he has to respect this piece because he doesn't know where my high pieces are. And since he's protecting a lead, he's not really going to want to attack this. And he doesn't have many scouts left, so, and he's used up a lot of sergeants. So he's going to be very hesitant to attack this piece. So that's why you can get in here and usually you can pick wherever you want to go uh, and open up a bomb. Sometimes you can even win the game. They'll let the miner walk right on in. So uh, since, since the marshal was on this side, I really wanted to hit this piece. But we're bluffing a little bit here. We're just trying to sell it. And now, now that was good that I moved over here because that forced him, he's coming up here. Now this is probably, you know, a, a low piece, a sergeant, a lieutenant, maybe a minor. He wants to scout what this is to see if it's my marshal or general. 
So, but now we know that, you know, it, he might, this still could be the flag, but it might be an open flag. So instead of attacking this piece, I'm going to try to attack this piece if he lets me. And we get a bomb, so that's good. Now I thought this is always this is always an interesting situation when you take a bomb here, or you, when you attack a piece, and then you get that piece, and then the opponent, instead of hitting with this piece, decides to swap pieces. You have to ask yourself, why didn't he attack with this piece? What was he hiding? Was this another bomb? Did he have, you know, like this, uh, two horizontal bombs? But I, usually beginners don't have horizontal bombs like that. They usually, if they have, especially if they have a, a flag with a uh, three bombs protecting it, because you just don't have enough bombs, really. You, you want to spread your bombs around uh, your board and how to not have them consolidated. But I love vertical and horizontal bombs. But he didn't attack me with this. So it could be a bomb, but I, I don't think so. I, I think this was probably a good piece. And since uh, uh, he just doesn't want this to be, be revealed, we know the marshal in general. So this is probably either a colonel or a major. He just didn't want me to know. So he decided to swap uh, miners. He, he didn't want uh, to give me another target to go after since he doesn't know where my high pieces are. So he decided to swap miners. But you always have to ask you when, when, when you capture a piece and then they decide to swap pieces instead of take with the other piece, you have to always try to st pause for a moment and try to figure out what this piece is. I'm thinking it's either a colonel or a major. Okay, so that's the colonel. So this might be a major then, if that was the colonel. And he probably has a colonel somewhere over here because his general started over here. So I'm still thinking I want to attack this piece because this is a popular spot for a flag. And like I said, 70% of the time the flag is on the uh, marshal side at the start. Since I'm up two lieutenants, I'm going to come up here with a lieutenant and hit this piece. And this is a terrible mistake I made here. I just hate this. This is what I call hanging pieces. It's my pet peeve. Uh, if you've watched my games, I hate when I do this. And I do this a lot because I get too laser focused on what I'm trying to do. And I only watch one side of the board. And I don't pay attention to what my opponent is doing. I'm focused on getting this with my lieutenant, and I just wasn't paying attention here, playing too fast. And in games like these, when you're behind two majors or three majors, losing a sergeant to a known general is just awful, bad, terrible. It's, you know, it's, it's stratego malpractice. You don't want to do that because every single piece is critical in the game. You always want to get new information, but if you can run away, if you can save a piece, save it. Don't waste slower pieces because as you become better and better. See, the problem is beginners, a lot of times, they don't, they don't even get to end games. Uh, you can play 200 games and you might not get to many end games. And you just don't realize how important these lower pieces are. But as you get better and better, you're going to get to, you're going to play better opponents and you're going to get to end games where there's few pieces left. And if you lose a, a sergeant like this in the mid, middle of the game for no reason at all, it, it can definitely cost you games. So 
every piece is valuable. Don't lose pieces needlessly. It's, it's just, it's bad. So don't do that. So now we're targeting this piece because I'm thinking, yeah, maybe it's a, maybe we get, we get lucky and it's the flying. And so we kind of got lucky that it wasn't a bomb, but it was a, uh, Lieutenant, so we swap. So that was that turned out okay. So we know three bombs. We have a bomb here, a bomb here, and we got one bomb. So I don't think his flag is over on this side now. He's not protecting this at all. And uh, he's just like ignoring this. And if this was a flag in the corner, that's very hard for a beginner to do. To totally ignore that it's just human nature to want to defend to want to protect the flag and since he's totally ignoring this I don't think this is the flag here so what I want to do now is try to hit this piece or hit this piece because I think maybe the flags here and the reasoning two two reasons one is because again four over from the left and four over from the right are the popular spots for flags. But he had his marshal over here at the start. And a lot of times when the flag is opposite the marshal side, it's more centralized. Because you don't want to have the flag in the corner with your marshal way over here. It's just hard to defend, especially if they marshal blitz you. It's hard to defend your flag over here if your marshal's over here. So he had his marshal here, so having a flag over here isn't so bad. So I'm thinking maybe the flag is either here or maybe here. So if you want to target this or this with a minor, that's the new goal. And I have to be careful because I only have two minors left. And I was, this was kind of bad. I should have known that was a minor because it came from the back row. That was, again, not paying attention. A better player would have not wasted a scout on that. They would have figured out that this was either a sergeant, lieutenant, or minor, probably. It's unlikely to be a major or a colonel from the back row. So that was a, that was one of those memory blunders. Now remember, this was the piece that came, uh, that was, was next to the bomb here, and he didn't attack my miner with it. And I w I'm assuming it was a major, because we got the colonel that was on this side. So I'm thinking this is a major. I'm hoping it is. And he's hoping I'm coming up with a captain, because I've been coming up with a captain and capturing some of his smaller pieces. So he really either wanted to get a captain because he's up, he's up, a, he was up two majors and then he would have been up two majors and a captain. So that would have been pretty good. Or if he loses his major, he would hope to find my marshal. Now, I, I don't, I, I like that move, what he did there. Uh, he did the right thing, but the only thing is, I think he should have done this earlier with his major. Uh, when you're up two or three majors, you want to use your major early on to try to uh, capture some of my lower pieces and maybe capture a captain and reveal a marshal. Press forward and try to find uh, the key information. But he waited a little late and I got lucky that uh, my colonel was in the right spot there. Uh, but that made sense that that was a major. And now I need to make an escape lane for my colonel. He's coming over. He's, he wants to try to get my colonel. And we, we're making the escape lane. So now that allows me to go down here. Now he's getting scared. So this, this kind of tells me that 
you know, he didn't move over here to force me into the bomb. So this is kind of telling me that this, this is a bomb and this might be the flag. So I'm beginning to suspect the flag is, is probably here. He's protecting this piece with the general. I assume he thinks this is a minor since it came from my back row. So turns out to be a bomb, which is great. He doesn't take with this piece. He takes with this piece. So good chance the flag is probably here. And now we know four bombs, one, two, and the two we have here. So now I decide to go up uh, with my lieutenant. I have a two lieutenant lead. I'm trying to find that last scout. That was the purpose of this, to try to find that last scout and maybe go here and then hopefully he tests this piece with his sergeant. This is probably a sergeant since he had a sergeant over here. I assume he has a sergeant over here. So that's why I just decided to bring up my lieutenant because I'm, I really want to get that last scout. And wow, this was a big moment in the game. I, I don't know. I don't know if I would say this is a blunder or a bold move. I'm kind of torn in between. It was an aggressive play for sure. Uh, and you know, that's the advantage when you, you know, you keep your marshal hidden. He never knows when you're bringing the marshal up, but maybe he thought I was coming up with the marshal since his general was out of position. Maybe he thought I was going to come, uh, come to, uh, pressure his general. I thought this was a really bold move, but I don't, I didn't really like it. I don't think I would have done it. Uh, but if it would have been my marshal, it would have been a good, good move on his part. I think maybe he was frustrated because he couldn't find my marshal the whole game here. So maybe that's why he did it. But now that really, that really puts him in a lot of trouble because he still doesn't know where my uh, marshal is and any piece that comes up here can be a high piece. So his general has to be scared. His marshal has to protect his general. And this is probably the flag. So he's going to have a uh, defensive nightmare now. So I wasn't looking for the spy. I was hoping to either get his last scout or maybe this sergeant. So I'm pulling it back because I don't want to lose my uh, lieutenant. I still don't think the flag is over here. I, th I think he's leaving his general there. And because he, he brought his marshal back and left his general there, I, I believe he's protecting the flag. It's, it just seems kind of obvious. You can see me pointing. I'm thinking this is the flag. So I decided to bring up my last miner. Maybe this was a little mistake. Maybe what I should have done is brought my general up here and brought it down here and, and went straight to here to see if the sergeant would take me. Then I would gain the sergeant and then I could come over here and swap generals, get a two for one. That wouldn't have been a bad move. But I decided to bring my miner up here. And I was hesitant. I wasn't sure what to do here because this is my last miner. And I was, I was worried if this wasn't the flag, if he had a flag in the corner here. I thought, because he still had two more bombs left, he could have bomb, bomb, flag here. But then to me, I thought for, I go into my buffer and I think, and I just thought, you know, when usually when players have a marshal on a side and the flag on the other side, they tend not to have it in the, on the, in the corner because it's so hard to defend when your marshal's far away. 
So I'm betting that the flag is here. So I decided to take my minor and hit this piece to really put pressure. If this is the flag to really put pressure on the flag and it's going to make him hard. It's going to make it very hard for him to uh, protect the flag. And again, the nice thing is my miner can come up here. He's not really going to attack it because this could be the marshal or it could be my general. So he doesn't want to lose a colonel or another major. You can see I'm, I'm thinking, I'm like, you know, because this is my last miner. You know, this could be a big gamble here. And now I'm happy because now I know these are both open. We found five bombs. Now we find, found the uh, colonel. So we have marshal, general, colonel, probably the flag. This is probably the bomb. So I could lie to all these pieces if I really wanted to. So now we decide to move my general up here to put some pressure on the general and colonel. And now it's time to pause the video and find the killer move. This shouldn't take you long. Pause the video for a few seconds and see if you can find the killer move. We know the marshal, general, colonel, and this might be the flag. What should you do? What should be your move? All right, this is very simple, very simple move to make. And that is, you move your scout there. He, he moved the general away from the flag. It's not protected. So unless this isn't the flag or unless this is his last scout, he's going to lose the game. And it turns out that that was the flag and this was not a scout and we get the win. So that just goes to show you how important it is uh, in this game, how important it is to save, to save your uh, scouts. Uh, at least, try to save at least, and, it, and it's hard, especially when you're a beginner, uh, but try to save at least one scout for the end game. It's helpful if you save two. But that's very hard to do. And you watch a lot of my games. I, I run through my scouts, uh, you know, fairly, fairly, fairly early. Maybe by the mid-game, I'm usually down to one scout. But uh, you really want to try to save one, one or two scouts for the end game. The first two scouts aren't that important. The second two scouts are so, so important. But then when you get down to your last four, you really have to decide if you really need to use them or not. And as you play more and more, you're going to be more comfortable with your reads. And then maybe you should believe your reads and don't scout pieces. Uh, trust your reads and then attack, attack an incoming piece with a piece that you think will defeat it. Will, that will capture it. So try to save your scouts. Don't be like drunken player and use all your scouts in the first uh, 20 moves of the game. That's not good. Uh, Always try to save some, and, and that way you, you'll put pressure on your opponent. Uh, they'll have to defend their flag, especially if they have an open flag. They can't go too far away from their flag if they have an open flag. And so you basically pin their pieces down. So he came forward, and then he, uh, he paid the price, and uh, it cost him the game. So this was a good uh, come from behind victory. I never did make I never did make up the uh, major deficit, but uh, I guess probably we were really ahead because of that spy capture. Uh, maybe you guys can comment in the in the uh, comment section below if you thought that spy his spy attack was a blunder, or was it just a bold move that didn't work out? I don't think I would have done it because I don't play well without my spy. I rarely ever attack a unknown piece thinking it's the marshal. Maybe, you know, if, unless it's really, really obvious. Uh, I think one time someone was chasing my colonel and I attacked, I attacked an unknown piece with a spy. 
and it was a it was a marshal. And then my opponent wrote, right away wrote in chat, "Oh, you lotto, you lotto, you attacked my marshal, unknown marshal with a spy." And you know, I figure, well, it was fifty fifty. Either it was a marshal or or it was a general. So, but you know, I, I think in several thousand games, I think I've only, I think I've only uh, attacked an unknown marshal maybe twice or three times successfully with a spy. So I, I really don't do it. Like I said, I don't like playing uh, without my spy. So anyway, this is game number seven of the uh, playing from behind series. So you can win other ways. You don't always have to to uh, to have the peace advantage. You can capture the flag. So what we learned here is how important uh, uh, your your small pieces can be. So save your Save your uh, scouts and and your and your sergeants and miners. Don't don't lose them needlessly because they can help you win games, uh, especially in the end games when there's very few pieces left. You need all your pieces. All right. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Bye for now.